everybody. Today we are going to look at Holly's Terminator X V3 software. We're going to go over some new boost control stuff that's going on in V3. It's, uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, they did not add this to the HP and Dominators, but um, you Terminator X guys got a lot of really cool stuff added to V3. Um, and the next big update for uh, Holly Dominators and Terminator or, and uh, HPs will be coming shortly. But the V6 build 300 added did add a bunch of cool features, just not all of them that V3 got. So let's get into it. If you're a turbo guy, uh, you're really going to like this. So I've got just a base cal open up here, and I'm going to go through step by step on how to add your boost ICF and uh, make all this work and how it works. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add two of the ICFs. If, hopefully you've watched some of my other videos and you know what that is, but it's an individual configurable folder. So we go to toolbox and we add individual config, go to boost and then default. So, okay. So it added just the, see it added the turbo there, right? So if you're a turbo guy, you've seen this before. We need to add one more to, uh, to this calibration. So we go to toolbox, add individual config, and we add the IO input or the IO uh, uh, ICF. Just hit default. So now we have the ability to add inputs and outputs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a... Sorry about that. I sneezed. Um, we need to add a, uh, a dome pressure input. So dome PSI, and we're going to enable that, and we're going to change the type from ground to 5 volt. Hit OK. Now we need to configure that input. So configure that input. We go over here, click configure, and we hit... Uh, we're in the settings. We're going to select what sensor we're going to use. So we'll use a 100 PSI Holly transducer. Back. We're done. So that's all we need to do for configuring the input. We need to drop it on a pin. So this is where you'll have to wire the input in for dome pressure. Most of you guys with turbo cars have already done this, but go to pin map. And you select an input that, uh, that will accept the uh, 5 volt uh, style input. So we hit done. Okay. Now let's get into the turbo stuff. So... This is your boost ICF. Um, there is some new stuff added to the boost ICF that uh, you guys that have used this before or have not seen before. So uh, we're going to select wastegate type, dual port, uh, dome pressure control, and the solenoid configuration, we're going to hit dual Holly solenoid. So if you have the standard like three port Mac valve style solenoids from Holly or whomever, select dual Holly. If you've got the billet block that comes from... Uh, Holly that's got the two high flow solenoids that would be under Holly high flow so we'll use dual Holly and here's the new part previously we had dome pressure only where we would just apply a certain amount of CO2 on top of the wastegate and we'd get X amount of boost and we'd have to figure it out now we have boost versus dome pressure so this is pretty slick so click boost versus dome pressure we're going to use boost versus time instead of any of these other ones uh, just because it's more familiar for turbo guys so, I'm going to, before we get into the boost versus dome, I wanted to point out that we also have the ability to now have a TPS-based boost modulation to start at 1% TPS, where previously we couldn't go below 50% TPS. So, that's another new thing that they, they changed or fixed or whatever you want to call it, right? So, if you use TPS-based boost modulation, you can start modulating boost at 1% TPS, all the way down to 1% TPS. So, Back to the meat and potatoes of this, boost versus dome. So now um, we have a couple more setup steps, but it's worthwhile to do. I've got this running on um, a guy's car for a while, and um, it's just been we've been beta testing V3 for quite a few months, and um, it's been working really, really well. So first we go into dome control setup. And our solenoid source pressure is uh, going to be fixed, so we're using CO2, and fixed pressure is going to be 100. So that's 100 PSI is what we have the regulator set to. Down here, we need to select our dome pressure input, okay? So click dome PSI here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't select the dome pressure input. So let's go to boost versus time. This may look different to y'all. So we have a max PSI and we have a dome PSI. So I'm going to go to dome and I'm going to try to type in 20, right? So watch what happens when I hit enter. It goes back to zero. The reason being is the computer doesn't know what you're looking for as far as dome pressure. So we go back to dome pressure or dome control setup. 
we add dome pressure and we go back to boost versus time. If we put 20 in there, it works. Okay. So that's a thing that a lot of people seem to get hung up on. Now, previously, all we had before with dome control only, and I'll, I'll show you that, right? We'll just switch this to uh, dome pressure only. This is all we got, right? So we've only got dome pressure. So previously, all we did was uh, we would key in a certain amount of dome pressure, aka CO2 on top of the wastegate. And um, let's just say we had 20 here, and then maybe we had uh, 10 here, and then we just ramped it to, to 20 here. So this is what our typical stuff would look like. Now, obviously, this scale is a little long. Let's make this, say, 8 seconds, and we can left-click, hold, and drag, and we can... Actually, we'll do this. We'll make this 2 seconds, because if you haven't got all the boost in by 2 seconds, what are you doing? Uh, and then we can fill row values. So... Uh, this may be, you know, your typical looking boost curve, right, for some cars. So what this is doing is we have zero, or at well, the moment we release the trans brake button, we have 10 pounds of dome pressure on it, and we hold 10 pounds of dome pressure for 0.4, and then we ramp to 20 pounds of dome pressure by 1.14, right? So this worked well. Um, the Holly uh, Dominators and HPs, this is what you're still using. Uh, they have not added this to that to that yet. But um, but this is this is new for Term X. Now we go back over here, boost setup, and we change this dome pressure only to boost versus dome. Notice a new box has popped up. We're going to get into that in a second. So let's go to boost versus time. So now we have our same dome pressure curve, but now we have to select the max PSI. So this is max boost PSI. Okay, so boost in the intake, so pressure in the intake. So um. The cool thing with this is that if we don't want to run more than, let's say, let's say 30 pounds of boost, right? Um, 30 seems to be the magic number where everybody kind of freaks out and thinks that you can't go over that. Don't know why, but they do. Uh, and then we, for the first 0.5 of the run, 0.57 of the run, we don't want to run more than 10 pounds of boost, right? And then let's just say this is what we want our actual boost curve to look like, right? We want to start at 10 pounds of boost and for the first uh, 0.57, and then we ramp to 30 pounds of boost by uh, 1.14. We don't want more than 30 pounds of boost. So if this dome pressure values, right, if, to if 10 pounds of dome pressure will cause the engine to produce or to cause the combo to produce more than 10 psi of dome or of, of boost pressure what it does is it will start to remove dome pressure to not exceed that maximum okay so um there's a couple different trains of thought and i'll tell you this that it, it depends on how fast you set this thing up to work but you can get to the point where you just tune this thing in boost pressure as opposed to dome. So we can set this thing to 40 pounds of dome pressure the whole run. And that way the CO2 is not modulating, or our target isn't modulating at all. But uh, now as it re now it's going to follow this curve here, right? So it's one way of doing it. I don't suggest doing this because it's going to be like heavy overshooting. Um, I, I, I suggest figuring out how much dome pressure makes how much boost, getting it reasonably close, and then running a max PSI, you know, kind of as a safety net, right? So the way this works, and hopefully that you guys that have been running turbo cars understand it, but 20 pounds of dome pressure on some combos may make 30 pounds of boost. On some combinations, 20 pounds of dome pressure may, may only make 10 pounds of boost. So you'll have to find that value uh, of how much boost this thing's actually going to make, right? So um, if, say, 40 pounds of dome pressure makes 30 pounds of boost uh, and, and potentially, you know, may make in good air, make, make 31, 32, something like that, um, that what this will do is that when it reaches 30 pounds of boost, it's going to start limiting the dome pressure. So uh, this is, a, I think, in my opinion, a pretty awesome feature uh, because it, it makes it extremely accurate, right? Um, so if, you know, as our RPM increases, it may take more dome pressure to build that same amount of boost. You can tailor this to your needs. It's, it's pretty awesome. It, it, to me, it's a, 
it's a really big step in the right direction for more accurate boost control. Um, I personally, I like just dome pressure only because I know what the engine or what the combo takes to make X amount of boost, right? I don't really tune it by boost. I tune it by dome pressure just because it's been what I've done for so long. Um, so there's a couple steps that we're going to have to take to really kind of dial this in, right? So this max PSI is going to work off of a separate PID loop. So if you look at dome control setup, we've got the ability to key in our own PIDs. And I've made a, a, another video on how to tune the PID, but Holly has simplified the PID for dome control even more, right? So what they did is they gave us, this is new for V3, they gave us slow, medium, and fast, which is pre-canned settings um, that they have, you know, worked on to... Uh, to make it reasonably accurate, um, depending on how fast of a curve you're really going to run or how, what we mean by that is how big of a step change you're going to be making, um, from our tar, you know, from the start of the run to the end of the run for, uh, for dome pressure. So these are nice that there's some, some drop downs already in here for you. Uh, this is strictly for dome pressure, CO2 pressure. Okay. Uh, now what we need to do is set up the PID for our max boost pressure okay so notice it's got a control speed slow medium fast okay so or if you're super smart you can go to custom my suggestion to you is start off at medium the way this is going to work is at slow um, what it'll do is if your max psi is 10 pounds of boost in the engine and we've got 10 pounds of dome pressure in the uh, on top of the wastegate it is going to make a slow response to lower the dome pressure in order to achieve that 10 pounds of boost okay so if our whole run is 10 right and our whole dome pressure curve is you know like this maybe right um it is going to make a slow change to lower the dome pressure until we reach that target, okay? So the slow change will be a lot more accurate, but it's going to happen very slowly. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we go to a medium control speed, it's going to do it a little bit quicker, but it has a small potential to undershoot your max PSI, okay? Um... And then obviously if we go to fast right here, it has a larger chance of undershooting, right? So what I mean by undershooting is it's going to remove dome pressure here to say at first it's going to drop it to 10 and, and hope for the best. And then it may say, okay, we still don't have enough out. We're going to go to eight. It's going to make big swings is what I'm getting at. So then it's going to go to six and four to get down to our target boost of uh, 10 PSI. Okay. So, it's going to do those swings larger and faster to try to keep that max boost number closer to what you want, right? So what, what that means is when you select fast, don't be surprised if you see in your log a boost number go under 10 PSI, okay? Now, you also have to be, you also have to understand that when you put a max boost in here, a max boost pressure here of 10 PSI, there's a good chance that your wastegates are not going to be able to relieve enough pressure, even with zero pressure here on the dome, right? No dome pressure at all. There's a good chance that you may not be able to relieve enough exhaust pressure once the turbos are lit off or the turbo is lit off to actually control boost down to 10 PSI. So this max psi is max psi that the computer can control if mechanically let's just say for instance you got a 427 cubic inch ls and you've got a single 76 millimeter on it and you've got a single 76 millimeter turbo and you've got a single 46 millimeter wastegate on a 427 cubic inch engine boost is going to run away no matter what you do Right, so you could have no dome pressure on it, but it's still going to run away because you can't relieve enough, enough exhaust gas out of the wastegate to stop it from running away. So don't get mad at Holly if you put in a max PSI that is just unachievable 
with your combination. Okay, so if you've ever made a, a, a pass in the car with no dome pressure on it, and it makes just say 20 pounds of boost out here, don't anticipate the ECU to be able to do some type of voodoo to stop it from making that much boost, right? Because mechanically, it's just going to do it because of either A, your wastegate priority or your wastegate size or the cubic inch of the engine versus how big the turbo is. Um, it's just going to do it no matter what. So this is a control for the controller, right? So this is not, this is can't step in and mechanically change your wastegate size for you. So what it'll do is it'll remove dome pressure to have it reach the target max PSI for the run. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. This is a, a really, really nice feature. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. Um, uh, it, it, we've used it and it works really, really well. But it, I will tell you that it does take a couple runs to get this dialed in. Um, and then eventually what you'll wind up doing is you'll wind up tuning it right here at max PSI. So if that's the way you want to tune it. Um, if you don't want to tune it that way, then just go right back on over here and switch it over to boost or dome pressure only. And it's a lot more cut and dry. You just got a solid dome pressure number. So, um, but I do, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the boost versus dome. Very slick, uh, very worthwhile. Also, I want to throw out there um, the safety setup that's in all of Holly, right, for, for boost pressure. Um, I deal with this with customers quite a bit. They tell me I don't want to run more than 30 pounds of boost. And I say, okay, I don't know why, but sure. And what they do is they set this to 31. And then they set this to revert to wastegate. What happens is it's going to hit 31 pounds of boost on a gear change and when it loads the motor or whatever. And then the thing lays over and dies. And they don't understand why. Be realistic with your safety setups. If you don't want to run more than 30 pounds of boost, then my suggestion would be to set this for, uh, say, 31 pounds of boost for more than 0.5 seconds, right? And then revert this to wastegate. So be a little bit more realistic with uh, with the way this works. So, because if it hits 31 PSI or it's cruising at 30.9 and it goes to 31.0 and it, it, it cuts ignition or reverts to wastegate, the run's over. And that 0.1 PSI of boost did not make a change. It, it was not... That wasn't the defining line of as to where your your engine was going to be fine to now it's blown up. Okay, so um, so anyway, this is the new V3 boost control. It's pretty awesome in my opinion. Uh, I highly suggest you all check it out. So hopefully Holly will add this into uh, V7 software because uh, from what I'm told is it's going to take a complete um, version change in order to add this uh into the dominators and the hps but you terminator x guys you got lucky you get this pretty awesome stuff before the uh the dominators and the hps and y'all got a lot of really cool stuff added to v3 so check out some of my other videos where i cover the rest of v3 stuff that it was added um i'm working on um on a, they're they're all going to get launched all at the same time um so check them out see you